Hello everyone. Welcome to Wings of Physics. Myself, Deepali Kulkarni from PVP Junior College, Pravaranagar, Doni. Today, we will discuss about a chapter, Kinetic Theory of Gases and Radiation. In this chapter, we will study the ideal gas equation in two different forms. Then, difference between real gas and ideal gas and the term mean free part. Okay, let us start. We know that the three states of matter, they are solid, liquid and gases. And suppose a gas enclosed in a cylinder and that is fitted with a piston, that gas is having three variables. The three variables are pressure, volume and temperature. Out of these three variables, one variable remains constant and remaining two, they are either directly proportional to each other or, or inversely proportional to each other and the, then three gas laws are formed. Then first gas law, that is Boyle's law. In that law, pressure of a fixed mass of a gas is inversely proportional to the volume when temperature remains constant. That is nothing but PV that is equal to constant. Second law, that is Charles law. In that law, when volume remains constant, oh sorry, when pressure remains constant, then volume of given mass of a gas is directly proportional to the absolute temperature. That is nothing but V by T that is equal to constant. And third law that is Gay-Lussac's law. In that law, the when volume of a gas remains constant, then pressure of given mass of a gas is directly proportional to its absolute temperature. That is nothing but P by T that is equal to constant. Okay? Now by using these two laws, we know that volume is directly proportional to temperature and pressure is directly proportional to temperature. Then combining these two laws, we can write PV, product of pressure and volume, that is directly proportional to the temperature. PV that is directly proportional to temperature. That is nothing but P1 V1 by T1 that is equal to P2 V2 by T2. Okay? Then PV that is directly proportional to NT for N mole of a gas. And to remove this proportionality sign, we have to put constant and that constant is R that is nothing but a universal gas constant and this equation 1 is called as a ideal gas equation. In this equation, the N is number of mole, R is universal gas constant and T is the absolute temperature of the gas. Then we have to calculate the number of mole of the gas. Number of mole that is nothing but the M divided by M0. What is M? M is mass of gas. And M0, molar mass of a gas. Means mass of 1 mole of a gas. That is nothing but N divided by M0. N divided by Na, sorry. So what is Na? Now, consider a 1 mole of a gas. This is 1 mole of a gas. 1 mole of gas, that is nothing but 1 mole gas, that is equal to 22.4 liter gas. Okay, this is the relation between the mole and liter. 1 mole, that is equal to 22.4 liter. And in that 1 mole gas, the number of molecules are 6.023 into 10 raised to 23. 
and that is called as a aho gadros number this na is called as aho gadros number means a number of molecule present in one mole of gas means in 22.4 liter of a volume of a gas that is the aho gadros number okay now we have to obtain this ideal gas equation in another form for that purpose we have to substitute the value of this n that is equal to n by na and value of r value of the r universal gas constant that is na into kb what is kb kb is boltzmann constant value of kb that is equal to boltzmann constant and that is equal to 1.381 into 10 raised to minus 23 okay and value of r becomes r that is equal to na into kb value of na that is 6.023 into 10 raised to 23 and kb 1.381 into 10 raised to minus 23 This plus minus that gets cancelled, and value of this universal gas constant R that is equal to 8.314 joule per mole per kelvin. This is the SI unit, or in terms of a mole value of universal gas constant. And if value of T is as it is, then this N A N A that gets cancelled. And PV that is equal to n kb into t. This is the second form of a ideal gas equation. We have to use this equation while solving the problem. Understood? And this equation one and equation two that is the ideal gas equation. Understood? Now we have to study the difference between. the real gas and ideal gas okay ideal gas and real gas ideal gas molecules obey the ideal gas equation pv that is equal to nrt at all temperature and at all pressure at all pressure and all temperature then real gas molecule they do not obey pv that is equal to nrt this ideal gas equation at all pressure and at all temperature but the real gas molecules obey pv that is equal to nrt only at low pressure high temperature always keep in mind a word lpht lpht low pressure high temperature understood second point the ideal gas molecule suppose this is the ideal gas and ideal gas molecule they are having negligible mass they are having negligible mass then this is the real gas molecule real gas molecule they are having finite mass they are having finite mass due to the negligible mass the ideal gas molecule they do not have the force of interaction no force of interaction in between them no force of interaction due to finite mass the real gas molecule have a force of interaction they have force of interaction in between them force of interaction the ideal gas mo molecule collide elastically they collide 
इलास्टिक रही वॉट डू यू मीन बाय इलास्टिक कोलिजन वेन कैनेटिक एनर्जी एंड लिनियर मोमेंटम कॉन्जर्व एट दैट टाइम वी कैन से दैट द कोलिजन इज इलास्टिक कोलिजन मीन्स द टोटल कैनेटिक एनर्जी एंड टोटल मोमेंटम बिफोर कोलिजन इज एक्जैक्टली इक्वल टू टोटल कैनेटिक एनर्जी एंड टोटल लिनियर मोमेंटम आफ्टर कोलिजन देन वी कैन से दैट द कोलिजन इज इलास्टिक कोलिजन देन द रियल गैस the real gas molecule they collide in elastically they collide in elastically means kinetic energy that do not conserve but linear momentum conserve means kinetic energy before collision is exactly uh, before collision is not equal to kinetic energy after collision but the linear momentum before collision is exactly equal to linear momentum after collision means kinetic energy do not conserve but linear momentum conserve and therefore the molecules of real gas they collide in elastically okay then internal energy of ideal gas that is due to the only kinetic energy and that kinetic energy is directly proportional to the temperature but the internal energy of this real gas is due to the kinetic energy as well as potential energy of the molecules kinetic energy and potential energy of the molecules okay then the ideal gas equation they do not obey do not obey van der waals equation on the wall equation but the real gas molecules obey van der waals equation they obey van der waals equation and van der waals equation is p plus n square a by v square v minus n b that is equal to nrt this is the van der waals equation and real gas molecule obey the van der waal equation and they do not liquefy ideal gas molecule they do not liquefy they do not liquefy and the id real gas molecule liquefied at certain conditions they liquefied under certain conditions under certain conditions and this is the difference between the ideal gas and real gas it is useful for physics as well as chemistry got it okay then next topic that is mean free path first we study about the free path what is the free path suppose this is a gas molecule and according to the kinetic theory of gas when first molecule collide with second molecule at that time it travels in a straight line path and during that path its velocity remains constant okay according to the kinetic theory of gas when one molecule collide with the second molecule it travels always a straight line path and during that path its velocity remains constant and this path that is called as free path means the definition of free path is the path traveled by the molecule during a collision during that uh, its velocity remains constant that path is that straight line path is called as a free path suppose the first molecule collide with second molecule this is the free path then second molecule collide with third molecule this is the free path 
Then third molecule collide with fourth molecule. This is the free part. Then fourth molecule collide with fifth molecule. This is the free part. Means you observe that the length of this free part that does not remain constant. And therefore, we have to calculate its average value. And its average value that is nothing but a mean free part. Mean free part that is denoted by lambda. Means the total distance covered during the collision. Total distance covered during collision divided by number of collisions. Suppose n is the number of collisions. If four collisions are there, then total distance covered during four collisions divided by four number of collisions. By using this formula, we can calculate the mean free path. And therefore, definition of mean free path is the average distance covered by the molecule during the collision when its path remains the straight line. Understood? And the mean free path that is given by formula 1 by square root of t pi d square n by d. What is the d? This is the formula to calculate the mean free part. What is the d? d is the molecular diameter. This is the molecular diameter. We know that molecular is very small. Then its molecular diameter is also very small. And its square is also very small. And if d square is small, mean free part is large in, due to inverse proportion. Then this mean free part also depends on the area of cross-sectional, cross-sectional area of the molecule. Then what is n by v? n by v that is the density. We know that if number of gas molecules are large, density is large. And if density is large, mean free path is small. And if number of gas molecules are small, density is small. If density is small, mean free path is large. Means there is a inverse proportion in between density and mean free path. And this is all about the mean free path. Do you understand? Okay. If you like my video, then like, share and subscribe. If you have any doubt, query about this article, then put down in the comment section below. And also press the bell icon. Thank you.